All right, and here we are with another video with me, uh, Mr. Hain, and we're going to talk about rate of change from a table. And our essential question that guys are learning in this video is, what information about a relationship can I derive from a table? So there's a lot that you can tell uh, from a table, um, if it's a relation or if it's a function, there's a lot of things that we can do. We're going to see what we can kind of derive. So. Let's dive right in. Okay, so if you were in my class, uh, there'd be uh, like 36 people and we'd be kind of just bouncing questions off of each other and figuring out what we could ask about this table. But since you're watching the video, the key question I want to ask is what is the rate of change? So uh, I'm going to take a look at the uh, time column, the X column, the left column, and I'm going to see how much each of these numbers increases by. And they increase by one. So since they increase by one, then the rate of change or the change in x is 1. So that's a, that's a change in x. So I'm going to take a look at the right-hand column or the distance d in miles. And I'm going to see how much each of these change by and if that number is consistent. And I see that all of the y column adds up by 5s. So I know that the change in y is 5. Cool. So we know and recall that rate of change is the change in y over the change in x, which means the, that it is equal to 5 over 1. All right. Deeper question. How is rate of change related to the equation of a line? So I gave you a hint by saying m is equal to 5 over 1, or m is equal to 5. If you said the rate of change is the slope of a line, then you are absolutely correct. Rate of change is the slope of a line. All right. Let's keep on moving forward. So we have an application problem. To achieve orbit, now I give you guys the, the context for where this came from. This is exact same table from the previous slide. And I want to write an algebraic expression for miles in number of, for any number of seconds. So uh, I'm going to take the first point, And since I know that uh, distance is going to equal m times t seconds plus b, the y-intercept, uh, I, I can substitute in 1 and 5, and then I can uh, find out that my b is equal to 0, which gives me the equation. I know that m is equal to 5, the change in y over the change in x, so my formula is the distance is equal to 5 times the seconds. All right. Let's describe this in words. For every how many seconds, how many more of how, what happens to the distance? The distance increases by five miles every second. And we can graph those ordered pairs. Y is going to be distance. T is going to be, or X is going to be time. Uh, and I take each of these, just like I have one and five circled, and that becomes an ordered pair. Two and 10, three and 15, four and 20, five and 25. Of course, connect the dots. And I do have a graph for the distance in miles after T seconds for this space shuttle. All right, giving context to the table. Let's keep on moving forward. All right, um, so uh, why don't you just pause the video and see if you can recall what these, what would make sense, what vocabulary words make sense for this, uh, for the blanks here. Uh, I'll be here when you get back. And we're back. So recall that an equation is a mathematical sentence stating that two quality, quantities are equal. And a linear equation is an equation with a graph that is a straight line. And some equations contain more than one variable. Sweet. So um, we want to know if this relationship is linear. And when we want to know the initial amount. So to find if it's linear, I need to see if it has a constant rate of change. And here I see that on the right-hand side, the liters is increasing by 0.95. And on the left-hand side, it's always increasing by 1. So, that means I know that my rate of change is 0.95. The change in the right-hand side, the liters, divided by the change in the left-hand side, the quartz, or the, y, or the x and the y. All right, cool, the y and the x. So, now that I have that, I can actually work backwards. Because I see that the rate of change is 0.95, and I'm adding each time to go back up to the initial amount to find out 0, I'm going to subtract 0 0.95. And 0 0.95 minus 0, um, 0.95 is 0. And that's why I know my b is equal to 0. That is my initial amount, is 0. If I have no quartz, I have no liters. That makes sense. 
my equation is uh, y equals 0.95x, but it wants us to uh, describe the relationship um, with quarts and liters. So that means liters is equal to 0.95 quarts. Excellent. So for every quart, I have 0.5 line liters. That would be in words. Awesome. Okay, so I've done a heck of a lot of talking and you haven't had a chance to practice and that's where these come in, C, D, and E. So I want you to do the same thing that I did here with example B. I want you to find, is the relationship linear? So you gotta find out if they have a constant rate of change. And then what's the initial amount? So for B, I went backwards from, uh, from number one. I went back one space because one minus one is zero. So I need to find the Y value when X is equal to zero to find the initial amount. Go ahead and pause the video and there are just the initial amount, is it linear? And see if you can do C, D, and E on your own. I'll be here when you get back. We're back. All right, so the, this does have a, uh, I'm gonna check the rate of change, it is 4.5. It's linear for C and the initial amount is zero. For D, um, I see that the rate of change is 15 and if I go back, the initial amount is 40 minus 15, which is 25, sweet. For E, the month is increasing by one and the dollars is increasing by 115. So I know my rate of change is 115. And it is linear, so then I need to go back t uh, two times because this is at two. So I go back once and do 115 and then 115 again, which is how I got 230. And 235 minus 230 is five. That's my initial amount. Sweet. All right, cool. If you're in my class, you have an exit card, and if you don't and you're watching the video, you've got a summary. So make sure your table of contents is updated and you have written your summary. And until next time, keep doing the math.